I think it's a combination, actually, of uh, two things, maybe. It's really hard to know, precisely. One is the provincial planning initiative called The Places to Grow, which came out in 2005, which essentially is about trying to limit suburban sprawl. And the second, and it's, it's hard to know what begets what, but the millennial generation, it's not just in Toronto, but in a lot of North American major cities, seem to have a proclivity to living downtown. So I think those two factors have really created a kind of a notional synergistic condition in which we're getting this massive intensification in, within the city of Toronto, and that's what's really fundamentally changing the skyline. We really have no zoning in the center of the city. We have a series of design guidelines that are based on how to build tall buildings, which I think is perhaps the worst way we could be building the city. And by that I mean we're attempting to codify what a building should be as opposed to what a city should be. Toronto is about, you can do a building this big in its floor plate and this tall and it must be this far from other buildings. And so you start to get a kind of a sameness that has very little to do about the quality of the streets and blocks and more about the individuality of those buildings, although ironically they all look the same. They're all trying too much and when we look back at this time in history and urban development in Toronto, we will wonder why the buildings were so much the same. And this notion of sameness is kind of interesting to me. If we think about the kind of early 20th century, late 19th century neighborhoods in Toronto, I think one of the things that we like is the sameness of them. There's a predictability about them. It forms great streets and blocks. So it's okay to be the same. It's just a question of how much the same and the quality of those buildings.